Welcome to Fox Sports League Legends, where we take a look at the fascinating history of rugby league through the eyes of those who played major parts in the rich story of the game. 1982 was a groundbreaking year for Australian rugby league. State of Origin went to a three-match series and the Kangaroos came home undefeated for the first time, earning themselves the title, the Invincibles, and showcasing an exciting new generation of talent. The captain of the Invincibles was Manly's Max Krillich, and he's been good enough to join us on League Legends. Welcome, Max. Good afternoon, Tim. Let's talk about that 1982 Invincible side, because with the benefit of hindsight, it's a who's who of the game, the biggest stars. But how was it viewed when it was first chosen? That's they, ended, they ended up as the biggest stars, but um, the commentary before the uh, actual, before we went away was a bit of a bagging. No one knew about particularly about Eric Grath or Brett Kenny or uh, Peter Sterling, how good these guys were going to be. And um, after three months later, they realised how good these guys were. And then down the track, five and ten years later, all these guys were nearly the best players to ever play rugby league in their generation. So it washed a lot of um, smirks off a lot of people's faces. There was some heavy bagging at one stage, so they soon started to change their, their minds because uh, it's like uh, it's like any bunch of players that come through. It's always a new generation, which always happens, and it's great to see new players come through. As you say, Sterling, Junior Pearce was Pierce. a revelation oh, yeah. on that tour. The scores would suggest that you were at another level to the opposition. Did Frank Stanton and you ever feel as though there was going to be a hiccup, a stumble along the way? Frank would never let you think that way. Um, he kept you on the he kept his foot on the on the pedal the whole time. Would never give you a, a reason to to fall back. He um, particularly with all the young guys. So you don't you didn't want them getting complacent. And we had a lot of older players as well. There was myself, um, Craig Young, Rocket Ready, um, Les Boyd, who'd been on the previous tour. There was a few a, a Ray Price, Steve, the great Steve Rogers, for instance, um, Magic Steve. Um, so we had a lot of experience there as well. We had to keep the young ones in check. Um, keep their level, the head, the heads on the ground, basically, not up there in the clouds, thinking how good we are. And um, it was a, it was, and it was great work by Frank Stanton to make sure we didn't get carried away by ourselves. Yeah. Let's go back to your first days in rugby league. Of course, uh, you're from a Croatian family. Yeah. And what was your first contact with the game? It was funny about that. My first contact with the game. I mean, I am a Croatian. My parents, in fact, obviously, uh, I'm the first Croatian. Uh, Captain of Australia, so that I've probably been the only captain of Australia in any sport. I've uh, been a Croatian background, which I'm very proud of. My mum and dad came out 80 years ago. So, but on that, I was 12 years old. I played two or three games of rugby league for Brookvale, uh, and I got picked for the uh, a city uh, a combined city side for some reason. I must have been able to play. I went away on, and then I played rugby union for three or four years. Got headhunted to go and play with the under 15 side, and then just started playing. That was in rugby league side. Then. Uh, played rugby league and junior reps and then just went through the grade. You were fast, weren't you? And, yeah. and you were a goal kicker, were you not? Goal kicker, toe poker. Yep. Could kick him though. I tell you, my first first grade game, I scored a try, kicked three goals and won the scrums. Obviously got Frank Hyde's man in the match, the old watch. <laughs> now, uh, being fast, was there a perhaps a 5'8 trapped in you somewhere? Do you yeah, think? yeah, I was yeah. like a breakaway. I used to play rugby and as a breakaway and... Um, yeah, I was, I was quick, you know, over 40 metres. In fact, Rod Reddy, on that, go back to the kangaroo tour, Rod Reddy and I, he was my great roomie, and he always thought he could run. I, we, we had a special match race one day in front of everyone down, down they were all on each side of the line. He had to dive over the, over the, uh, the line to get me. He still didn't catch me over 40 metres. So, yeah, I could power a little bit, but then everything happens, you get slower. Well, you turn up at the Sea Eagles and considering who was in the hooking spot, you might have been better off playing 5 8 match. Might have been better off playing. Oh, Fredo, Freddie Jones, the great Freddie Jones, I've got to say. I was a great ball winner. So they, uh, and I was playing reserve grade. We won the cot one year in 69 under Ronnie Willey. Um, but Fredo main stayed. And if, in fact, I think he went away in the 71, 72 uh, World Cup sides and kangaroo sides. He was a terrific player, Fredo. And I just had to bide my time, uh, which was four and a half years, 100 games. Yeah. The mid-70s, Max, were the Roosters' years, 74, 75. Yep. But if you go through the records, you still had a very consistent team, didn't you? Very good. So, well, when you got Fulton in there, yeah. um, you know, my very good mate, Bozo, um, if you got him in your side, you are half a chance of winning. Then we had Graham Meadie and Terry Randall, um, Alan Thompson, these sorts of guys who win you games. They're, they're, 
they're not just just players. They're, they're the Jonathan Thurston's and the Cameron Smiths of today. They're just the best players. So, and that's if you've got the best players in your side, invariably you win games. Now, 1976, as you said, you had Bob Fulton. Parramatta beat you. You're the minor premiers. Yep. Parramatta beat you in a brutal major semi-final. Yep. Now, it really looked at that point as though their fairy tale, their first premiership was about to unfold, didn't yes, it? Correct, and they also had a parade down the streets the day before, two days before, <laughs> yeah. celebrating a victory that didn't happen. How good was that? <laughs> good for you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, and they tried all these tricks, and, you know, um, Jack, um, Jackie Gibson, the, the innovator of great things in rugby league, had the wedge coming in, and I was the idiot who got in front. And there's uh, Graham, of course, just kept poking them over yeah. and keeping you in the match. And uh, but he did that day. The 1978 final series, Max, is probably unique. And perhaps would you say it was the greatest in Manly's history? Possibly because of what we had to do. Yeah. It, it was very interesting. A lot of people don't know what actually Frank Stanton went through and what we did. He actually got a general, a major general, or the highest brigadier general of the Australian Army, come to us at a number of, uh, two or two times and speak to us about putting our bodies on the line, how he and he, he brought his staff sergeant with him. They flew in by helicopter into Brookvale. They, he kept on saying how they had to get over a mountain in Vietnam uh, to get at the enemy and they were getting shot at. The staff sergeant were getting shot at and you know, guys were getting obviously killed. And he said, you're not going to die. You know, so just put your body on the line. And which we were very injured, by the way. We were guys were really knocked about. Well, would you have possibly conceived that after the first replay, that you'd have to play another one after the grand final. Yeah. You couldn't have possibly yeah, even you wouldn't dreamed that. The, you wouldn't put that on anybody these days. Yeah. Well, they wouldn't allow it for Six a start. Six matches in 23 yeah, days. You, know, yeah. you wouldn't allow it. Um, I don't know how many injections I had to play. Really? Yeah, yeah. And it's as simple as that. And, the, you know, and I know a lot, most, like Terry Randall was a, a needle. He and I got needled. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, we just got needled up to play. And uh, in those days, you had to get needled up to play. Um, the doctors here just used to say, away you go, you'll be right, mate. So, and we were right at the end of the day. So. Yeah, what was the atmosphere like on the Tuesday? That in itself must have been weird, Max. It was a funny day. It was yeah. an awful day, by the way. It turned out miserably cold. It was very dark. At the dark, yeah. uh, miserable, low day at the cricket ground. And, um, um, and we won quite at 16 blot, um, 15 blot up to half time. Um, I had a my nose shockingly broken um, by um, Ian Thompson coming in to give, give one to Paul Carney. Got me, thanks McGilla, you know. Yeah. So he got me, and um, and then we won the scrums at well, half time. We're six one or something. We had all the ball, fifteen nil. That was the end of the game. One back kicked a field goal uh, after half time, sixteen block. Um, yeah. So and then half a dozen, oh, eight, seven or eight of us went on the kangaroo tour a couple of days later. Yeah, 78 kangaroo tour. So it was just, you get your rewards, put the hard work in, so you get your rewards for the kangaroo tour. And that one used to be, and I used to think, when they stopped doing the kangaroo tours, um, I used to, I thrived on going on the kangaroo tour. It was just, representing Australia is just, just the pinnacle. Through all of that 1978 series, you had the issue of Greg Hartley. Yeah. And he'd given Cronulla a penalty with which they could have won yep. the initial grand final. Yeah, Sludge, the, Sludge yeah. missed a few important yep. goals. That would have won the title for them. Yep. Yeah, they would. And people forget all about Sludge missing those goals too, by the way. And um, he was a terrific goal kicker, Steve. And uh, you know, and, and that's why I've, I'm, I'm one of these things. I don't, I'm not a great believer in all the things that happen in the technology in rugby league today. Referees are there. They'll make mistakes. They make more mistakes now than they did before. So I don't know why we aren't going back to one referee, no bunkers, and get rid of everything. Just play the game. Do you think the, the questions about Hartley's refereeing in some way reduce or denigrate your victory? No, not at, at all. You know. Not at all. You know, like he sent John Gray off in one important game. Um, he sent so many Manly players off. He sent Randall off. You know, so he... he I thought he was a bit of a Canterbury man myself. So, as you know, he worked for Canterbury. So, so his wife did. So, and then he ended up there. So. so now you go on the 78 Kangaroo Tour and you get dropped. What happened there? Yeah, I played the first two test matches and we got beaten in the second match. And, and George Papas, a very good friend of mine, Dr George, um, he was playing better than me. I, I was really crook, by the way. I played all that, the, the series. Six grandpa. games, yeah. Then I played the first game because Ronnie Hildich and George couldn't play. They had inoculation problems. I played the first two or three games and my form went downhill. You know, I, was, I was not in a very good state. And 
my shoulder, which I couldn't even lift up above my head. I just kept playing, getting needled up to play. Um, and my form disappeared, and so George took my spot and said we should. But then I got to back off him too. Sometimes even great actors don't deliver. But luckily, fast, reliable Foxtel broadband does. In fact, we're now ranked number one on the Netflix Speed Index. Just call 135 704. Get more bang for your buck with a large pizza, garlic bread and drink combo for just 10 bucks on Domino's Hunger Savers menu. Not kidding. Not kidding. You hear that? Where else can you get a lunch combo this good for just 10 bucks? Only at Domino's. Add Sustagen Active to your morning with calcium and vitamin D to support bone health, plus vitamin B12 and iron to support energy levels, helping you to stay active. New Sustagen Active. Set up your day, support your health. Feminine Fragrance by Paco Rabanne. When tennis champion Pat Cash won Wimbledon, his chicken headband was almost as famous as he was. I love my hair then, still do. And that's why I'm seeing Advanced Hair Clinic. Their amazingly effective treatments have stopped my hair loss and regenerated hair where I was losing it. And I'm confident I will now maintain my full head of hair. Advanced Hair Clinic, they're the world champions in hair restoration. Call Advanced Hair Studio now. Dakin Alira X split system with advanced streamer technology to remove more than 99% of harmful indoor air pollutants and surround yourself with cleaner air this summer. Dakin, perfecting the air. There's nothing like cricket. It's sunshine, snags, samosas, slip slop slap. Bring your mates, your mob, your yaya, your nonna, your nani. Sink on the lips, hands on the hips. Heroes. How's that? Hot days. Oh, where's the shade? The worrying. The winning. The wishing you were here. It's old friends, new friends, staying till the end. It's cricket and there's nothing like it. a deep dive on the wild side. This has never been done before in shark science. With more premieres <laughs> to throw a shark at it. Damn. Shark Week starts Sunday 7.30 on Discovery. OK, the new decade kicks over. Some changes at Manly. Alan Thompson has a year, then Ray Ritchie comes, and then a guy called Ray Brown turns up yeah. and Max Krillich turns 30. That's Did right. you feel as though you were under a bit of pressure there? Uh, yeah, yes, and, yes and no. In fact, I started probably training harder, and which is what you do. And over the years, they kept on buying um, different hookers here and there. They bought Johnny Gray at one stage. They come over and John ended up, my very good friend Johnny Gray, he ended up playing prop in second row with us and then he ended up going back to Norse. And, and, um, and he was a terrific player, Johnny Gray, but he couldn't uh, get get me out of my spot and... Um, you learnt from Fred Jones, hadn't you? Yeah, you yeah, yeah. On. You don't give yeah. a mug an even break. No. Fred, they told me that my 21st, he got up on stage and said, I'm going to tell you something, you don't give a mug an even break. Oh, thanks, Fredo. Yeah. yeah. So and I remember that, so I never gave those guys an even break. So I never left the field and Frank wouldn't want, want you to leave the field at all. He taught me that anyway. He wasn't a coach then, but he taught me you, you, you don't cry off. Max, uh, a new decade had ticked over, but some things hadn't changed about Rugby League in 1981. Let me show you some vision here and let's have a listen to Rex Mossop. I'd like to watch it. First scrum win to Newtown. Renogas around the side of the scrum. There's a brawl erupted now. Make no bones about this one. There are three separate groups fighting. Broadhurst handling Bowden out to the left. And they're going out at hammer at times like two heavyweight fighters, these two. 
Okay, Max, uh, there's a number 12 comes in here at some point and uh, has a bit of a scrap on the ground. And you're in the thick of this one. Tell us about it. Uh, that's the way it is. You know, you, you know, I wasn't going to let him get over top of me, Walters, and uh, he wasn't going to let him get me over him. So we just got stuck into it. Um, well, the fact that this went forever, though. It did was... go forever, and <laughs> Tommy was there. What do you think, Tommy? This was Radonikus. Yeah, of course it, it is. Yeah. My mate Tommy. This was his tactic to basically derail Manly in that match, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, and, and he, then, you know, he's a great friend of mine, Tommy, and he, you know, he knew how to upset us, and then he, it, then that stopped and went on again a couple of minutes later, and he, and Boydie and couldn't hold himself back, and, you know, he loved how scrapping on, so. But he got Tommy and Boydie just out of each other, you know, the best of friends. <laughs> yeah. Were you surprised at uh, how badly Mark Broadhurst was beaten up? Shockingly, yeah. he, and he's such a nice fella too. But that's what happens, mate. The uh, Bowden got hold of him and this nice old headbutt, and away you go. Imagine doing that today, you get life. The first Origin series to go to three matches was in yeah. 1982. Correct. And at that point, Max Origin is in its, I guess, its first stages. What were you thinking about it then? Yeah, well, New South Wales, the New South Wales players still didn't get grasp it. I, I got to tell you. One of the reasons why we didn't grasp it, we, we only wanted to play test football. We weren't worried about playing for New South Wales, to be very honest. And New South Wales didn't interest us. You're just getting picked for Australian sides, and that's what we used to do. Consequently, what used to happen, the Queensland side used to get picked a week and two days before us. They'd have the weekend off. We'd get picked on the Sunday and play on the Tuesday. We'd be going OK till half time. Our legs would run out, and Wally Lewis and the boys would run over the top of us. And it wasn't until 1985 when Turvey side uh, won the, that they were actually allowed to have the same amount of time off. After many times, I went to Ken and Arthurson and um, and the hierarchy then, and I, I used to beg to them to give us time off. The idea was we want this to get off the ground. It doesn't matter if you guys get beaten. You know, you, you just got to have to handle it, and that's the way it was. And what a great contest it's happened now. This great thing, uh, this state of origin. So it's great that it really happened. But in those days, New South Wales got the real wrong end of the pineapple. Yeah, because the, the McAuliffe and Tossa Turner and the rest of them, they thought they were always, this matters to Queensland. We don't care if it doesn't matter yeah, that's to right. them. That was their whole attitude. And that's wasn't the way it? to play. A very good friend of mine, Fatty Vaughan, kept on saying, I'd rather play for Queensland than play for Australia. I, was, I kept on saying, shut up, fat. Shut up, because you know what happened. He was vice captain of Queensland and didn't make the kangaroo tour. Yeah, because he kept on saying, "Rather play for Queensland, we'll stay in Queensland." Then don't go away and play for Australia. And it was only going to follow, wasn't it, that that state of origin was going to change the way Australian teams were selected. Yeah, that's right. Well, and, and that's the way it was. And then it ended up, you know, usually seven each and, or whatever it is, in the, or eight each in, in the sides. And uh, but Queensland, with, with, while he was dominating in those days, he's such a terrific player. Uh, but then they, we had, uh, what can I say, we had Brett Kenny. And every time they moved Brett Kenny away from 5'8", Queensland were always a chance. You know, they used to play him 5'8", we'd win. They'd play him in the centres, we'd lose. And that's, that's just stats show. You know, Brett Kenny was such a good player on, on, on Wally Lewis. That year, 1982, uh, you captained Australia in a series victory over New Zealand. Yeah. And then you're on the bench for the grand final. That's right. Well, I tore a, I tore a medial ligament. In the final of the, uh, um, I think it was one of the competitions during the season, and I missed the last three games. The competition, all the, all, and they said, as long as you play the grand final, it doesn't matter if it was one minute or ten minutes or, half, or the whole game, you'll get selected for the for the kangaroo squad. Well, I didn't even know how my knee was going to hold up, and you wouldn't believe it. There was nothing wrong with my knee at the end of the day. It was fine, and, and I played five or ten minutes, if that, and. They unfortunately mainly got beaten quite convincingly that day by a very good Parramatta side. So now you assemble this uh, collection of disparate personalities for the 82 Kangaroo Tour. People like Wally Lewis, Peter Sterling, Wayne Pearce, Mal Meninga, very young Mal Meninga, yeah, very, yeah. Uh, first of his four Kangaroo Tours. What was the thinking? What was the view? Well, it was hard because being the old old bloke in the side, which I was 32 years of age, and I was way, way the oldest, I'd say there. Um, and then you're reading the papers, and they're bagging us, and no one thinking, well, you think, we're going to go over there and do our best, because you don't know that we had about eight blokes at 20 years of age who turned out to be all th the best players going around. <laughs> and, you know, you got Mal and Wally there, and, 
you know, Pearson, you know, Sterling, you know, you Steve Ellick couldn't make the side. There's always reserve. He's there around there. He's tra a zip man, you know, like, and, and you got Les Boyd. So anyway, we went over there and punched our weight. Look, and Stanton didn't allow the media and all that, all, you know, the negative stuff to get to you either. He just, when we went over to England, he just punished us. He, he said, I'll show you what it's all about. We're, I'm going to punish it. And he did, he punished us on the training paddock. You know, we just finished playing all our games over here. Didn't worry me because I missed the last, you know, 10 games of rugby league or whatever it was. But all the guys have been playing, basically. But he went over there and really belted us at training, you know, and that was Frank. And some players didn't like that, did no, they? No, if you Some players can't handle Frank's uh, heavy, um, heavy discipline, you yeah. Know. He and Wally Lewis butted heads, didn't they? Yeah, they did, yeah. Because Wally was, thought he was a king. He was, he was still a prince at that stage. Mm. And, but unfortunately, McAuliffe, and they planted the king on him already as a 20-year-old, and um, he ended up being the king. So rightly he should. He's an immortal, and um, he was probably one of the best players ever played rugby league. Mal Meninga called the 2016 Four Nations team one of the best he's seen. And he would know. He goes back to when, mm. when you captained the side. Is it that unification of cause? Is it that, uh, you know, do you, do you circle the wagons? Uh, do you get really tight? How do you meld, you know, team, players that were great rivals at state of origin level, yeah. how do you meld them together? Well, that, that's a good question because go back in the, the start of that year, there was a city versus country game and we're all there and there's all the 30 odd players were there or, you know, the city, all the city players were all there from both sides. And I happened to notice Ray Price was there with, um, all the Parramatta players, it, the, the whole team made the, the, this city firsts and city seconds. There was 11 or 12, and he was right in the middle like the Queen Bee and all these little bees around him. And I said, that's, that's not a very pretty picture. That stuck in my mind for six months later. We went to uh, England. I said to Frank, we're talking about Frank, what we're going to do and who our room is. And he said, you'll go to room with Rocket. And I said, not Rocket again. He said, because I can't put him in one of the young blokes. He said, you've got to be with you because you don't know what he could do. But that what happened. We, no Queenslanders were together. No um, New South Wales blokes were together. No Parramatta guys together. No Manly guys together. Yeah, there was 7-7 seven, seven and 6-6, six, six, you know, so. And then you all, if you went out for a, a drink, you couldn't go out with a, two Parramatta guys. You had to have other guys with you. So there's no clicks amongst you. And that's what Mel uh, Meninga did last year, you know, in, in, in that Four Nations tour. He had them as a, a great unit, you know, they, they were a unit and that's what we were. We had to be in the bar every night at six o'clock. Doesn't matter if you didn't have a beer or had a beer or a soft drink or water like a lot of them did, like water or soft drink, you had to be there for between six and seven and be there. And there's no excuses. Let's uh, take a look and a listen at a bit of vision from near the end of that tour, the third test. Oh, and another break from this moon, Wayne Pearce. He's got Kenny with all, oh, and can Krillich go in for his first try on this tour? He's got 15 yards to go. Yes, it's a try. Yeah, Max, uh, nothing wrong with your legs there. Still no. that speed. And well, you're 32 there. Can I tell you one of the funniest things about that try? And it was my only try on the tour, although I came close a lot of times, yeah. <laughs> Rocket Reddy, my great friend. Dirtiest player ever to play rugby league. He makes some blokes look like choir boys. He's running with his arms up. He runs past Lee Crooks as I score the try. He puts his leg straight down him. Pushka. Well, Lee Crooks, as you know, firebrand that he came out. He was 18 years old. His first test, but throws about 20 at, at a rocket. Bang, 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 rockets running backwards. The French referee goes, bruh, bruh, you're off. Um, and all of a sudden, they've got 12 men. I've just scored a try out of the post. And we just got away with it then. And, yep. and that was Rocket doing what he had to do. I did what I had to do. And that's why we, we become invincible. Because we, although Rocket wasn't the breed of ball player he used to be, the needle he produced was unbelievable. Who was the best player you ever played with? Bozo, mm. by a mile. Yeah. By a mile. Fantastic player. He could win your games. Um, in fact, it, I don't know how many times he'd win your games by himself. Mm. Towering ability was how Ian Heads once described it? Yeah. his ability. Yeah. Yeah, it, was, it was fantastic, Bose. Um, and such, he's not, not big in stature, he's smallish, like fast, aggressive. And, you know, and, and that's why he's an immortal. You know, all these immortals are so good. 
You know, and we've got to have to have a few coming up soon, by the way. You know, there's some really good ones coming oh, through yeah. soon. But, you know, all the ones who are in Wallace, the Wallies and, and then Arthur Beats, you know, they're great players. Gee whiz. Who would you pick out of the current bunch? Cameron Smith. In last year's, uh, or last number of years, but last year in that Four Nations game, I thought he was terrific. And he's just one of the best players. I'm, I'm saying that he, he's not the best hooker I'll probably ever see because you don't know if he can win the ball. He's the best number nine you'll probably ever see. Uh, two different things, you know, um, and that's the, they should change the wording of hooker as hooker anymore because he plays like a locker or anywhere. He's not a hooker, he's a dummy half. So I uh, just change the terminology of, of the position he's in. Jeez, he's a good player. And so is Jonathan Thurston, as we all know. And, and I like Matty Scott. You know, there's some terrific players playing the game. But I, I think there's a few, Norm Proven, Ronnie Coot, Steve Rogers, should, their names should be thrown up there for those people who pick those. You know, I think Steve Rogers... I was at a function with all these kangaroo guys last year and half of them on the one table said Steve Rogers was, should be the next immortal, so he was a fantastic player, Sludge. You're from the generation of players who often had jobs. Yeah, full time. You're, you're a plumber. Plumber. I remember one day you came to my place and yeah. you're up to your neck in it, so That's to speak. It. That's it. Is that, what did that mean to you as a person and in terms of what you would do after the game with yourself? Well, you had to make sure you're right for work the next day. Uh, yeah, so you, you, you know, we used to like to have a party. You used to have a drink after the game, but that usually only went to eight o'clock or seven o'clock. So, and then you go home and ice up and fall asleep, and the ice would be on the floor all over you and and stuff like that. And so you could go to work the next day. Um, it's just the way it was. You had to earn a living. You weren't earning a living out of football in those days. Although, in, in saying that, I was pro probably at one stage I was the highest paid player in rugby league. Well, you can earn more as a player now than as a plumber, can't you? I mean, <laughs> probably just, but not by yeah, far. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, oh, mate, Jim, I wish I was playing today. Yeah. Um, but then I'm saying that, good luck to them. Mm. Go, that's fantastic. And I, every cent they get, good luck to them. And you got two new knees now. Yeah. But uh, getting them was a bit risky, wasn't it? You had a brush. I've had issues. I was on um, death's door there for about, uh, I was on life support for about 20 hours. Now, I'm, like... When I had the knees done, they ended up doing a spinal tap. And now I've got new knees, so I'm looking forward to... Well, how are the new wheels? How are they going? Yeah, a bit rusty. <laughs> a little bit of oil. <laughs> but you never know. They'll be right. Yeah. Oh, they've got a lot, lot left in them. Yeah, yeah, a lot, yeah. Hitting, hitting a lot more walls. That's what I've got to do. Oh, lots of golf. A lot of golf. Mate, thanks for being part of League Legends. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. This has been a Fox League production.